Hi, this is a quick tech demo using a new Bluetooth controller that I've got that connects to Android devices like phones and tablets. So I wanted to test it out, see how the connectivity worked and the input system. So here I am just making a few sprites to go in the game. It's a cat game, cats don't like water and they love fish. So your job is to catch the fish and avoid the water. If you get hit by the water, you lose some fish. Simple, right? So basically what I wanted to do was test the new input system connecting this gamepad. And now the gamepad is called the Moga XP7 X Plus. Quite a long name. Uh, I got one of these recently. They're about $100. And it's really cool. I've been playing Dead Cells with it on my phone. And it's brilliant seamless so I wanted to test out making a project in unity with it so the uh, new input system is pretty good um, managed to set up an action input map to get all the controls working basic left right and jump and it works so I've got fish and the uh, little raindrops here in statueing above our cat friend just testing with a debug.log to check whether I'm getting a trick or a treat um, next thing to do is to check all the hitboxes and make it a little bit tighter. Then I want to make sure that everything's getting destroyed so when we get hit by a fish or a raindrop they get destroyed. Um, next step is going to be instantiating a particle effect. So what I want to do is have a particle effect of sort of explosion, just a burst of fish when we get hit. So here I'm just making a material out of a 2D fish sprite that I made in a sprite. And then I'm setting that in the renderer for the particle system. So this is a cool way that I kind of figured out today. <laughs> I've been using sprite sheet animation uh, with a single sprite for a while. And that is wrong. Uh, so yeah, setting a material, setting it up correctly. Um, and then I can do the same thing for the raindrop and I'm just setting it to a really low lifetime in the particle system, so sort of 0.2 seconds, and a burst of 20 or 30 particles. Setting a kind of random rotation over time, getting them to get smaller over time. Here we go, now I can see they're actually instantiating in the right place, but we're just getting a stack of particle systems in the hierarchy. So I need a quick destroy script. So after a set number of seconds, the, uh, the fish get destroyed, and so do the raindrops. I'm also setting up a score system real quick so that we can keep track of our score. Setting up a new font for it. Using TextMesh Pro this is really easy. You can drag in any font that you can find on the internet and create the asset for it. I want to make sure that we lose a kind of random amount of fish when we get hit by a raindrop. And uh, as I was making these effects, my partner pointed out that it kind of looked like Sonic, right? So when he gets hit and all the rings fly out of him, so I figured that would be a cool effect to make. So here I'm just having to play with that, setting some velocity over time, playing with the gravity. I also want to make sure that there's um, some interaction with the ground plane here. So I'm doing a collision so that when I hit the plane at the uh, ground level, here we are, putting this in, we can see that the fish are bouncing off it. I can set the amount of bounce, I can set the amount of lifetime they lose so that they die quite quickly. And then I want to start a sub emission here so that when they're hitting the ground they're actually exploding into smaller fish which might not be scientific but it's pretty cool um, I'm building this and testing it as I go uh, building straight to my phone it's automatically building the APK file to the phone uh, a little bit of fiddling setting that up Unity seems to be looking for the SDK in the wrong spot uh, after a bit of googling I realized I could just kind of point it in the right direction uh, and that solved my issues with the build and here I'm just making sure everything's sized up correctly. Yeah, building successfully. Okay, so yeah, here it is actually in action on the phone. You can see the controller kind of, it, it's variable size, right? So when you put the phone in, it stretches open. Uh, Bluetooth connection is really quick and simple. There's a Bluetooth button on the back. You just hold it down and select it on your phone and then you're good to go. And it's kind of slow when you're on the ground moving and then when you jump you've got a little bit more control. I uh, haven't added any animations yet, just a little test project to see what would happen. And it's been pretty good fun. This is a really cool controller. Uh, definitely going to be making more projects with this. It's got a lot of potential I think. It's um, 
probably going to be something that people are going to be getting more of. And I, yeah, had a good time making this little little demo. Took about an hour and a half in total. Did a little research on connecting the controller. Uh, ended up just using the input system and generic gamepad. There we go. See, we get hit by a raindrop and all our fish come out. Anyway, if you want to see more projects like this, subscribe.